Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Pipeline Podcast, coming at you from the year 2023. But enough about 2023, we have guests here, not the guests, the other hosts, and they are. <laughs> I'm Clay, hi, CMM. I'm James, and I, I actually thought we were here to talk about MILF Manor, so I feel, yeah. I feel like I got trapped. We should have been talking about MILF Manor. <laughs> I confessed to my girlfriend today that I'm watching Milf Manor. She was very disappointed at me. <laughs> uh, she should watch it with you. She'll see the light. She said, yeah. Um, I'm What Up Muffin. I'm also known as Jared. I don't think I said that. Uh, <laughs> we have so much energy right now. It's been a while since we've done one of these. I'm getting back into the rhythm of it. Yeah. So with in front of us today <laughs> is a list of the 2022 uh mostly nintendo switch video games mostly from nintendo not all and we're going to rank them definitively <laughs> on this podcast we'll, we'll release the full rankings in a text form uh after this after this podcast releases to the world sure um and we've definitely played all of the we've definitely played all of these games and even if we haven't we're still going to rank them yeah um let me just add one more game to this list. Um, <laughs> we're still adding games. Oh, I yeah. definitely didn't waste an entire year of my life playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Mm. I definitely didn't do that. Sure. So, yeah. So we're just yeah. gonna go down the list. Yeah. And obviously, the first game will be number one. Correct. That's just how it works. So the first game, an automatic number one slot. Is Kirby in the Forgotten Land? Absolutely, fantastic. Hey, that game know. is pretty good. Yeah, this is a pretty good video game. This is the first uh, 3D Kirby game ever made. Definitely oh. one of the highlights of last year for me. Yeah. Very, very cute game. It's got a mouthful of fun. God. <laughs> uh, I think I think a theme uh, a theme for 2022 for me was that like there wasn't a lot of big stuff for me. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of smaller stuff that I yeah, got. Put I in your mouth. Yeah, sure. This was one of the, like, uh, one of the bigger Nintendo releases this year. One of their yeah. tentpole video games, as you might say. Yeah. And I, I yeah. think it was the most interested I've been in a Kirby for a long time. Yeah, I love also Kirby's one of the only ones stuff. I finished. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, Nintendo games, I mean, not oh, Kirby wow. games. Oh, I oh, finished okay. like every Kirby game, but <laughs> uh, it was really good. Hmm. Very, very good. I like yeah. the. Uh, there's a lot of content. Um, yeah, it's got a. It's got a. I, I didn't do much of the post game, but it did seem like there was a lot of good stuff there. If you were, yeah, um, post game wanting is, more Kirby. Post game is neat because they always find a way to kind of like make the post game like. A little bit more different every time so the whole like yeah. collecting chunks of whatever soul is was fun it remakes the it, it reuses the same content but freshens it up yeah yeah which is which is fine they made day-to-day um, -day fucking feral they did <laughs> incredible um he is, he's like a beast yeah yeah he's a member of the beast troop isn't he or the the beast pack something like that, that what they're called yeah, yeah. Beast Pack is that no, really what they're called? I think that's what they're called. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to research or confirm that because that's against the spirit of this podcast. True. Yeah, we no research allowed. Um, um, but yeah, very successful conversion to 3D. I would say. Um, yeah, there's some stuff was... that I wish were a bit different, but I feel like not only did what they come out with was really good, it's also a great base for the future. Yeah, it feels nice. It is a nice feeling Kirby game in 3D. It feels it still feels like Kirby. They did it. People said it couldn't be done, but they were wrong. Yeah. It'd be cool if it were 60 FPS, I guess, but like Yeah. That's such a minor complaint when you consider how like good it feels to play. Like they they uh they managed to nail the game feel even at the lower frame rate somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it should have been open world like Elden Ring, but like, you know, maybe for the next one. Yeah, maybe have a horse that can jump really high, yeah. you know. Mm. Nice. Are we gonna driving ride, the car was fun. Are we going to ride DDD like a horse? And like, on that note, uh, <laughs> our next game 
I got a, I got a fan fiction you can read if that's oh. what you. <laughs> that's um, not our next for game me. is the, the other Kirby game that came out this year, Kirby's Dream Buffet. Yes, that is. I think of these two games, Kirby's Dream Buffet is the worst game to come out in 2022. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of those two, probably. Of those two. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Since those are the only two games that came out in 2022, I agree. Who uh, here has played Kirby Dream only, Buffet? I played a good the amount games of games that came out to Kirby. I um, played a little bit with with Clay. Yeah, you yeah, we did play together. I played a bunch of I've it. played I, none I, of it, but it looks cute. It's, it's very, okay. It's very cute. I like the game itself. I just think it needs a little bit more in terms of like being able to maybe set some options yeah um, you can't even choose your levels it's it's kind of limited what yeah well it like randomly will put together a grand prix from you out of the stuff mm -hmm. you have unlocked um wow yeah yeah it, it is really bare bones like even yeah. for like a little downloadable thing yeah uh all i know it's are... how but that's yeah. like an that's such a fucking nintendo thing yeah yeah <laughs> There are lots and lots of, of unlocks, though. Like, there's lots yeah. of stuff in there. It just takes but, like, a while to But, like, I just don't it. feel encouraged to do them. Yeah. Because the gameplay is not that compelling. Yeah. And also, the online netcode isn't that good. Yeah. Uh, I've had mixed... I've had some, some occasions where it went great. I had occasions where it went horribly. And I had some occasions where it couldn't find anyone. So I just played with bots anyway. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're both East Coast, so it it went okay. Yeah, but like when I've done random matchmaking, some games are just unplayable because it'll just be so lagging and slow. Yeah, it's um, it's simple, but it's very cute and a really nice celebration. Like a very good anniversary yeah. <clears throat> anniversary title. Music sounded really good too. Music was great. Yeah, yeah, easily the worst video game, YouTube. but um, definitely yeah, definitely the worst video game of the two video games I've ever, I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unironically, the worst Kirby game come out in 2020. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um, I feel like we stacked the front of this list. We did, but that's just because like it was the stuff that came to mind first. That's fair. Should um, we just go down the list or just yeah, pick stuff just at keep, random? Let's just keep going okay. down the list. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Uh, someone else. Uh, how about I'll James? Do okay. the next. Oh yeah, no, like go. Okay. Well, the next one's Splatoon three. And it's kind of tough for me to decide if I like it more or less than Forgotten Land, but my instinct is telling me to put it above Forgotten Land. Um, I would. I would definitely. I think. I think. I think of these games, Splatoon is the best game of 2022. <laughs> it's. Uh, they really like added um, a lot of content uh, to Splatoon Three, even though it was like at the you know when we were like waiting for the lead up, it was like what is actually new in this game. Um, turns out a lot, they just were bad at showing it like normal. Um, I just think it's a wholly a more satisfying game than Splatoon 2 was just it's, down to how yeah. the systems interact. It's so well-rounded. I think every part of it is, um, is very full-featured. Like, even if you're only a single-player person, or even if you're only a, a Salmon Run person, mm -hmm. you still, there's still a lot of stuff for you to enjoy. Yeah, the the single player was excellent. I think it's probably my favorite of of the campaign. Yeah, it's the most creative. Yeah, um, I did hundred percent that. That was fun. Um, and uh, the salmon run stuff has been has been great. Mm. You know, they've added a big run in this year, and there's some new wrinkles to the salmon run uh, salmon run stuff, which I really mm. enjoy. There's the card game, which I didn't expect that I would actually like. That's fun. I yeah. Do. That that card game is fun. Did they add the multiplayer to that yet, or no? Not yet, no. Okay. So hopefully people next are expecting season. it in March. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that would be good because I, I it was a cool little like I don't know it felt kind of like like Blockus mixed with like like a battle card game. Yeah, I don't really have much context other than that. I, it's a card game that I didn't hate. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. I just and the multiplayer is great. I think the multiplayer yeah, is, is well I, done. Obviously, there's still balanced things to fix and a change. But... I don't really get much enjoyment out of regular Splatoon 3 multiplayer anymore at this point. Like, I just mm -hmm. kind of, like, I'm good on it. But um, I enjoy the events, and I enjoy Salmon Run a lot. So that keeps me um, going back. And they have the catalog thing, which is kind of fun. It's a little too grindy for my liking, but, like... Yeah, it's so grindy that I, I just, like... 
it's there in the background but i'm not like trying for it yeah like which is the, fine the most i'll do is try for like that like first win of the day or whatever to get the giant yeah um catalog level boost and then i'll be like cool um yeah we, the we're playing is my favorite mm. <laughs> it's my favorite what's thing. your favorite the lockers are my favorite oh, the lockers are cute. yeah very creative all half yeah. the money i spend in splatoon 3 actually probably like more like 80 percent of the money i spend in oh splatoon well if you're not 3. spending money on multiplayer yet it frees yeah. up all that it's, money it's it's the decorations <laughs> uh, we were playing this That's game a lot in the server funny. for a while like it, it was so fun to play with random um nintendo pipeline people yeah it, it was good um it, it is good I, i'm excited to see where the content goes Oh yeah, it's definitely the best feeling the multiplayer's ever been yeah. in Splatoon. Um, it's the best weapon balance the game's ever had, even though right now there's like a a slight problem with one of the weapons being just like way too good. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem I really have with the multiplayer is I hate like 90% of the maps. I do yeah. think the maps aren't as strong. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. That say um maps are not great it, it's just a it's like a design ethos problem it feels like they went for like more linear like less cover less flank routes mm. yeah um, like more like choke point maps are you saying or yeah yeah a lot of the maps are more like based on like single choke points yeah which, you know that kind of ends up being really good for certain kinds of weapons that mm, right. maybe make the game a little yeah. less fun to play, like mm. you know, e leaders and stuff like that. But yeah. right, uh, I think that that's a that's a problem that is not like terminal; it's fixable. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I don't really like is the seasonal thing. I think the seasons are lame, personally. What are the they're, seasons? They're, uh, oh, just that that's the update cycle. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I think I do... Splatoon 1 and 2's update cycles were kind of better, where you just kind of randomly got a weapon or a map dropped, like, yeah, whenever, you know. That's instead kind of, of like my personal, like, preference, but I, I do also kind of like the predictability of, like, oh, hey, yeah, we're getting this big dump at X points in time. Yeah, it just kind of keeps things, like, it keeps metas, like, locked in for yeah. a long period of time. And I guess maybe if we weren't stuck in a meta where, like, a lot of people, like, you go into a game and there's, like, two to three people playing the splash dramatic Yeah. Because it has, like, the best paint, the best kill time, the best mm -hmm. special, and, like, one of the best sub-weapons in the game. Like, maybe that would be less of a problem. Right. Uh... Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it, yeah, you kind of get stuck with certain, and you're like, well, well, now I have to wait another, you know, three months or one and a half months for a balance update or... Yeah, or like whatever. a new weapons, uh, yeah. like a new set of weapons to come out and kind of shake things up. Uh, but yeah. other than that, yeah, that's real good. I haven't even touched the single player. I haven't touched the card game. Oh, wow. You gotta I've, play the single player. It's really fun. I've really only played Salmon Run during the big run event, which is cool. I want another yeah. one. I'm waiting for it. I'm yeah. kind of upset that we're getting another Splatfest before we get another big run. Well, they said that I think they said big runs are uh, once a season. Once a season, so uh, which is not. Will be yeah, two. Yeah, seasons are going to be two Splatfests and a big run. I guess is uh, the way it goes. Yeah, it's a, it's it's something. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I, I still like. It's a game. Like, if people say like, "Hey, we're playing some Splatoon," I would, I would still be like, "Oh yeah, let's do it." I probably, I'm definitely not. I'm not sick of it. I probably would have. Would be playing it more if my Switch wasn't near death right now. <laughs> so oh, there's that. Sorry for your lost. That's okay. We'll get there. Um, the next video game. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Who, who here played this? I did, Maybe. actually. I played this. I didn't play it to completion, keep in mind. I played for a while until I was distracted and Kirby came out. That's mm -hmm. pretty much how that went. And I did not hate it. This was the most fun I've had in a mainline Pokemon game. It's almost mainline Pokemon game. It, we'll just say it is, just to make people upset. Yeah, uh, I think it is. Like, I think it unambiguously I mean, I, is. I, I, I think mean, Game I think Freak it considers it one. Yeah. Uh, I liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun um, with this game. Go, go, go ahead, James. I think I did. I think I did everything. Oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe I missed like. Yeah, I, I think I missed like maybe the last, like point one percent of the game, like. 
I don't think I fought the very, very, very final boss. Mm -hmm. I played just until credits. Um, so I, I didn't do most of the post game stuff. But yeah, it was a really cool thing. And to be honest with you, I was a little bit bummed that less of it made it into Scarlet and Violet than it did. Yeah, I thought sneaking around and being able to catch most of the Pokemon without fighting was really nice. And yeah. I thought getting in and out of battles was just so fast. Um, I liked how uh, I'm sure people who enjoy Pokemon will probably crucify me for this, but as someone who doesn't typically enjoy Pokemon battling, I actually do enjoy the, like, what was it, like, the strong and agile um, mm. systems, just because it made it a lot easier for me to just, like, you know, get Crush through things the parts more, yeah. that I didn't really care about quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also enjoy a lot of the on-screen sort of indicators of, like, oh, yeah, you know, this move is effective or whatever, because mm. I don't care enough to learn... I will say they did bring they did bring that over to um, Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, I saw that, which makes me happy. Personally, not not the strong agile stuff, but the, the you learn once you fight a Pokemon. Yeah, you the next time you fight it, you'll you'll know which moves are effective against. That's it. cute. I, I I like that. Um, yeah, I just I mean that's been in like, effect. Yeah, it's oh, for okay. a long time. I, I just like enjoy running around the the area and kind of trying to catch. Pokemon. It's it, it's it has it has this fun feedback loop of like trying to catch a bunch of Pokemon and hitting them in the face with balls. Yeah. And then, like you know, there's the different like objectives that go with each one, where it's like, mm. oh, you caught one that I I don't even remember anymore. Is like fifty centimeters. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah, yeah. someone wants a really big Magikarp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's silly stuff like that too. The the yes. cent the central town is fine. It's a little for me. The central town looks a little bit like too similar everywhere that I constantly kind of forget where anything is. Um, mm. But I I made it to like I want to say like area three. Okay. Yeah. Maybe end of area two. I don't totally mm. recall. Uh, the the bosses are fun. The the silly like yeah you know, they're like you run and throw things at. <laughs> With dashing, yeah, they're like yeah. action game bosses with yeah, Pokemon yeah. fighting. Yeah, I thought yeah. they were really charming. Yeah. Um, the game still definitely talks way too much for my liking, but, like, that's what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, and, the, I mean, the writing is whatever. It's yeah, nothing special. Yeah, it's for it's for eight-year-olds. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. <laughs> it's more just, like, please stop <laughs> interrupting me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, no, I, I really like walking around the world, and I, I do think exploring the world is more fun at the beginning before you get, like, flying and stuff sure but yeah i know i enjoy this game a lot i know for me like if this were just my ranking i'd put it at number three right now under kirby in splatoon 3 but above dream buffet i'd put it at number two but i don't f i if if you both agree that it's three then that's fine what do you i think? i think i would put it at three i okay I, I for as much as i loved it i mean kirby is like is a yeah I, I really like I really like Kirby a lot. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, the um next one is also Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Who else here played Pokemon Scarlet Violet? I've played like an hour of it. I'm waiting for them to release the late February patch to see if it's any benefit. Oh, okay. Did they say I, I played like a patch out at the end of February. Yes, so, okay. they did. I played didn't like say three or four hours. Entails. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, nobody's played this game that much. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Arceus. Mm -hmm. I do think it's better than Dream Buffet. Sure. I don't have too much to say about it. It, I think the world looks nice, even though it doesn't run that great. I do think the style um, is, is pleasant, and I think it has good vibes. It's good. I mean, it look, like I hesitate to say it looks good or great because it doesn't. No, no, but like, but, I don't know, but I it, do like how the world looks. Yeah, like, like... It's hard to explain. I like the idea of the way it looks, I guess, <laughs> like... Yeah. I, <laughs> some of the I some can, of the textures are abysmal. I can use my imagination to fill in the gaps. Yeah. There's enough there <laughs> that it's pleasant. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. not it's not completely bland looking. No, yeah. And I, I like that it's fully open world too. 
Like yeah. um, Ar- Arceus is made of like five different mini little levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and this is one contig- contiguous world, except for like a few load screens between cities. So that's. Um, I think it's visually no, it's... more appealing than Arceus. I don't yeah, think that's it... particularly controversial, but yeah, I don't know. I think but... that there are things about it that are like the, the, this is coming, like having not played it, but I think it's extremely lame that there's like you can't dress your trainer as you see fit. Oh yeah, there's like five, four costumes, and... one for each season, and that's it. Uh, um... That's such a massive step backward from like one of the most beloved features they've added to the series in the last decade and it's very mm-hmm. strange to just remove it and i can just like I, I can't even imagine what the like conversation must have been like where they're like we're gonna have to take out we just don't have time <laughs> we don't have time for the clothes it's either that or no pokemon battles <laughs> fuck yeah right like that's that's the that's the, that's the line um I think that it's uh like like I kind of said earlier, I think it's a little bit upset like a little upsetting that more of the Arceus like stuff didn't make it over, like the like the action stuff, I guess. Not necessarily yeah. the boss. Or fights, even just being able just, to like, like catch Pokemon like low level Pokemon without fighting them. Yeah. Um, I know you can like send out your partner. You can, but you can't like um you can't catch them that way. But you gotcha. can like send Pokemon out to like like murder like level ones and stuff because that's what pokemon do they murder each other yeah true true not beat around the bush here yeah we're adults yeah but yeah nope if for me it's better than kirby's dream buffet and not as good as rcs which puts it at number four in our ranking i feel like that's probably fair i I, I don't think clay feels super strong about dream buffet uh no i don't i also okay. don't have any illusion that dream buffet is going to be a good uh, game better than pokemon scarlet violet for people so yeah or probably just about anything else on this list <laughs> yeah i don't know if, stuff, if dream buffet will uh might continuously fall and fall and fall yeah it might might be uh, might be the bravely two of this year despite how cute it is speaking of games that are better than kirby's dream buffet how about james goes over the next game I didn't play Nintendo. Oh, you didn't Switch play it. Okay. Sports, <laughs> I played uh, the shit but out I of can, it. I can talk. I mean, I saw that they put some furries in there, and I was like, "Huh." <laughs> yeah, you can be a you can be a rabbit. That's yeah. pretty cool. You can be a robot. Oh, number dude. one. <laughs> you can live. Uh, yeah, exactly. You can live this, the life you've always wanted to live. This game I really like, and I'm also really disappointed by it at the same time. Yeah, um, it's it's very fun, but also like in some ways more shallow than. Yeah, uh, some of the other Wii what, Sports games. What's there is great. There's just not enough of it. Yeah. Um. There's no like mini game side modes. Yeah. It the each of the sports really lacking the the side modes and more focusing on the core sport. I think is a very unfortunate thing for this game, especially games like Chambara, where like the me showdown mode in Resort was probably one of the highlights so of fun. that game. Yeah, and that 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 mode is so much content. Like there's I mean, not even I, I hundred think... pin bowling. We got yeah. like we got the like the um you know the the tricky lanes, which is which is great. I'm glad they're there, yeah. but we didn't get hundred pin bowling even, which is weird. Soccer has the shootout mode, but I didn't think that yeah. was very fun. I honestly have not even like. I don't even think I. I don't even know if I tried the shootout mode. I might have tried it like once. Soccer yeah. is the probably the most mechanically complex one, and it's also the one that I care for the least personally. It just, I mean, it's just worse Rocket League. It, I don't think it's yeah, bad. It's not but... bad. It's just like, yeah, I'm not wild about it. Um, I I don't like the direction they went in. I think they should have just yeah. made a regular soccer game. I just, Inst- I don't. Yeah. I mean, we know we had the whole like sports mates and me discussion a while ago. That's another yeah, thing we've done that, that. Work for me, but. They did add this whole thing now where, like, you grind to get, like, customization items, mm-hmm. which, like, there's a lot of them, and that's cool, yeah. but it takes way too long to yeah to get them. As someone who grinded them all for, like, several months, it takes way too long yeah. to... I just yeah, didn't want to more... play it enough to grind through those. Weren't there, like, seasonal ones and stuff, too, that, well, like, go away or something? It's or... pretty much how it works is uh, th- there is an item board that will show up for three weeks, I think. It's either two or three weeks. 
and you have that entire time to to finish it and every week another item board gets added as well um okay so every three weeks essentially you lose an item board but you're also mm. getting new item boards constantly do um, they cycle through is there they haven't there's repeated a finite yet. number yeah they haven't repeated yet that's oh that's my goodness but, and also wow. the item boards are slightly different for everyone so well so there's like i believe i think how it is is there's three different it versions of each item board and depending on what your starting gear is you're always going to get like that version of the board so say like you have like That's set fair. a you're always going to get item board set a some people always get item board set b some people always get item board set c and uh so like that's a little weird they haven't made it like they haven't had any repeats yet so like if you miss so you just can't get some items you can't at the moment oh, um, wow they and they keep adding them which is fine like there's there's plenty of stuff my complaint is that so little of it can be used with a me that it's like why did you even hmm. bother um, yeah, I mean, are just in there oh, for are legacy. You serious? Yeah, you they're really just in there for legacy can't, support. You can't put hats on them. You can't put like, no. um, there's like facial stuff that came out wrong. But you know, oh, like they have certain like, clothing items can't go on them, right? Yeah, it's basically like if you if you're using a me, you can customize the equipment. You can you can customize the actual clothing, but anything to do with like the head, basically, yeah. is, is off limits. Ooh. What what you're telling me is that the only reason they put Mies in this game is they knew that if they didn't, a bunch of people born in like 1998 would be showing up at their doorstep with like rifles. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like you can clear, you can it. The Mies in the game are basically just another body type. Like you can unlock body types on the uh, the item wheels. So like you know, there's like the rabbit one. There's like the there's a cheeseburger one. There's got a bunch it. Of them. So the me is like the one alternate body type you have at the beginning and then on, on those body types you can't use every single customization item you can only use a couple categories um which i don't really fully understand but you know whatever um there's a lot there like you can get clothes you can get hats you can get like glasses you can get uh war paint you can get fucking um the, there's gear for each sport so like you can get different rackets for soccer it's like the the goal effect is is the is the equipment that you can unlock mm -hmm. for it um yeah you know so like that that part is cool it's just basically you need to grind 100 points to get another item and when you get 100 points basically what the game does is has you pick the item board and then it will randomly give you one of the items that's on the item board i want to say each item board has 12 items and then there's a completion bonus so like the completion bonus is usually like you know like the a costume. body or like you know a costume set um so you can't choose what you get on each item board it's a roulette um so there's that factor as well so mm -hmm. that basically means that each item board is 1200 points and typically baseline if you play a game of tennis and lose you'll get like 30 points um if you play a game of survival bowling and lose, you get 40 points. Um, and then depending on, like, you know, how well you did or what you did, you may get some more. So it takes a long ass. Yeah. Time. Yeah, that sounds miserable. It honestly. takes a long time. Even when um, you're doing I... well, it takes a long time. So. And they also added golf, which they is... Did. I haven't gotten around to it yet. It's worse than the other golfs because it's very finicky. It's It just has the Wii Sports holes again. Um, yeah it's just like it's so easy to like curve it and it doesn't feel as responsive as the older ones yeah it's, it's Shambara was weird to me at first in terms of i like i like Shambara. they changed it so that you can't like swing it as quickly so it's not yeah. as one-to-one -one, which is weird um it's kind of like that like each of the sports are fun but they all have different quibbles with they them have quirks yeah some of them i don't know some of the sports feel like they just go on and on yeah badminton Batman like and that. tennis can both like just go kind of back and forth and they don't feel like I don't know. Tennis at least I feel like I'm kind of in control of stuff. Yeah. Badminton feels like this exercise of like you're going until someone fucks up. Yeah. Um, it's it's a good game but it's yeah. no resort. It's yeah. not even like it's not even like a quarter of as good as the resort. Yeah. Um if they really That's added true. like new side modes and stuff and that would be cool. And also the local stuff is surprisingly like 
not much of it like it's yeah it's it's, it's very, meant to be an online game yeah it's very focused on the online battles which like fine but like i don't know it's just weird it there's so much about it that's weird i say all i wonder if that's a go ahead i wonder if it being focused on online is kind of a a uh, concession to a post-covid world yeah i wonder maybe but like even we sports club like had a lot of online stuff going on there and still filled it out with like the side modes and like mm-hmm. additional content it feels like less featured than we sports club i mean it feels like a lot that's of pretty recent... bad it feels like a lot of recent nintendo games where it feels like a little bit unfinished yeah it definitely feels like it was rushed. like it took like how long for the update to come out where you can play the main game of soccer with the leg strap <laughs> um and then it took like way longer than anticipated for the golf update to come out and i haven't even touched that yet yeah um so um, I, I hope they're planning content for like a i year, hope so too but like, there's not much i say all of uh, this and i'm still like i like it w- it's my number where, three <laughs> where would you rank this game i'd still put it over legends rcs <laughs> i would not put it over legends rcs <laughs> I I'll let you guys fight this out. Yeah, I could put it over Scarlet Violet. That's fine by me. Okay. I um I played an awful lot of it and I really do enjoy it. It's just it 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 needs it needs a bit more. It needs a shot. It needs a shot yeah. of some some content or or some way to get items besides that horrible grind session. They did yeah. they did add a thing where there's like sometimes a bonus multiplier on certain sports, which is kinda okay, but it still doesn't amount to much. So you're still Well, yeah, they're trying to funnel people into playlists. But yeah. anyways. Yeah. Which sports in the garbage, middle of the pack. <laughs> uh the next game, I don't think any of us here got this game. Right? I did. You did? Wow. I did. Okay, um, you go for the you go then. Mario Strikers Battle League. Um so this is what I feel about Mario Strikers Battle League. Um the core gameplay, really good. Um, this is kind of a theme here. Um, core gameplay, very good. It's a little bit complicated, but once you kind of get your hands and head around it, there's a lot of depth, and it is very fun, and it's well thought out. Um, the gear stuff, I could care less about, um, but it is pretty well thought out. The online is very good. The problem is similar to Switch Sports in that there's not enough like modes and content to really keep you interested um mm-hmm. there is the tournament mode from previous games um you can go through cups and then there's like a hard mode of that that you unlock when you when you beat the normal one and then besides that it's pretty much just the online um and obviously there's local too and i I, and I do want to say i think it's really cool that they did achieve eight player local for this game um but yeah there's no sidekicks everyone's a, is captains which i'm actually fine with um it's just can be a little bit to keep track of at times and then even after the dlc updates um i'll be honest i've like barely checked in with the dlc updates they basically just add like yeah, cuz they add characters nothing. And a stadium, but the stadiums don't matter because they're mm-hmm. all like they're just cosmetic. They had a perfect setup for like chaotic fun where you because each battle is like whoever you like whatever you pick is one half of the court and whatever mm-hmm. the other person picks is another half of the court. So they could have done like court specific gimmicks and then you could like mix and match them, but there's not any of that. It's just Oh, they don't do anything. Yeah, they're just Great. they're just standard. Um, which is fine on one level because the game's already complicated and chaotic enough. I feel like if there were court hazards, it would be like just way too much. I mean, there's stuff yeah. like perfect passing and like, you know, I, I find it overcomplicated. I, I didn't yeah. like the beta, so I didn't get the game. It's definitely a bit overcomplicated. Like they, it's very well thought out and it's good if the people who are playing are on the same level, mm-hmm. but if you have a large skill disparity or if you're hopping into it for the first time, it is a lot like it is. There's a lot going on. Um, yeah, it kind of like it sounds almost like a fighting game, right? Like, it, yeah, it, it, not, not, like, not, it's not, like a lot of recent switch like Mar- Mario sports games. Yeah, Just Mario Mario Tennis Aces was also kind of like a fighter. Yeah, I, I think well, I, they kind I of meant, like. Not not even necessarily like mechanically speaking, but from a like. The the single player is pretty sparse. Yeah, um, it's a super deep 
competitive game yeah that you have to find a community for yeah yeah and the whole like and that's okay for fighting games but like but i don't want it for mario strikers or tennis the whole online um uh, club thing is pretty cool um but yeah you need to have like people playing consistently and i don't think there's much kind of bringing people back like each dlc update has been two characters a stadium and a new wave of gear and there's been three of those updates which is nice um but it's not like yeah people kind of weren't too happy with like how many characters there were by default i personally Mm -hmm. didn't really care that much but you know more characters is good it's just that's not the main issue like the the free updates haven't addressed like the actual main issues with the game which is that there's a very there's a lack of ways to play it and the default gameplay is really good but is like a bit too complicated i think they took the criticism from people that like oh mario sports games are too simple or whatever and like that's been kind of like what they've been pushing against this time went too far the other way and now they don't feel like fun pick up and play sports games yeah they're still fun they're just less it's it's harder to get into them i think Um, funnily enough where where would you rank this one um honestly i got more mileage out of dream buffet than i got out of battle league okay i'm fine with that um i'm not sure finish your last point i'm not sure if i really would put it below dream buffet but like my instinct is telling me to put it below dream buffet so that's where it's gonna sit for now i mean i played the beta and i liked it less than dream buffet yeah it's it's a shame there's so much good stuff in that game um and it just kind of yeah it's just kind of a thing that exists i think mario strikers is the worst nintendo game of the year of these seven games (laughs) yeah these seven games I still intend to pick that game up one day, uh, but I'm, um, I know Nintendo games don't often fall in price, but I feel like that's one that you'll, like, be able to find used. Yeah, yeah. I, like think a- I think Tennis Aces has gone on sale for, like, 30 bucks before, too. Yeah. Yeah. And also, too, with Tennis Aces and Golf, they actually had something of a single-player component to it, um, or attempted to include something like that. Mm-hmm. Um battle league is just the tournament mode from past yeah games, and it's, it's very just, bare bones it's very yeah it feels and the gear stuff yeah. is just not interesting i don't like the gear stuff. i don't want to yeah. mess with stats in a mario sports game i really don't yeah i mean not that it's really a um excuse for it or anything but like the other strikers games also just had tournament modes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't have much more content this season. yeah 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 it's kind of just yeah. yeah. So next game. Yeah, which we've all played. Yes. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the first three DLC waves we felt were significant enough to, to yeah. be a spot on here. And we're just going to group them together because yeah, I mean, we don't have all night. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, so I really like the new course DLC. I think the picks have been great. The tour conversions have been great. A lot mm-hmm. of the stuff that they did with some of the courses that I just wasn't expecting, like the courses that have you like double back on like lap three or like yeah you know um c- combining calamari two with 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 calamari desert like stuff like that the peach gardens thing um the only what was the track, peach gardens thing the peach gardens thing the third the lap is just completely yeah it's completely new and different like you oh really i didn't realize that through it hmm. um the only stinker for courses that for me so far has been toad circuit all the others I feel like have merit to be there and I have enjoyed. Um Toad Circuit is definitely like the one like wasted one that I'm like, why did you even bother? <laughs> um uh, yeah, when when there's like when there's so many tracks though, I I really don't yeah. mind one being I mean, a little there's bland. Inevitably gonna be some that are better than, yeah. than others. And Toad Circuit is actually kind of fun on two hundred CC. Yeah, that's uh, fair. We need to go super fast. Um uh, I like they add new mechanics. They yes, add the um the half, half pipes. pipes. Yeah. Yep. They also added the uh I think it's worth mentioning, uh they added the item list thing. Yeah, that's a great feature. Very funny. Yeah, um, so I I feel like if if it had just if, if all the updates had just been like the first one, I would have been really bummed. 
Well, mm-hmm. not bummed, but that's kind of what I was expecting. I would right. have just been kind of like, eh, all right, more tracks, whatever. But the fact that the second update and the third update have also kind of come with like uh, new options and stuff, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, this could like continue being really cool, and then we're only halfway through it. What did <laughs> what did they add in the second update again? I forget. I don't remember. I might actually be conflating something else now that I think about it. I know there were some minor, like, there's been some balance tweaks with updates as well. They've like, also, like, fixed, like, improved DLC tracks, which was cool. They have, that, yeah, they have yeah that's what they that. did. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that is yeah. right. The In actual... DLC pack 2, they made, they, like, they made the cars move again, I think, a little bit. Yeah, yeah they, and they Coconut tweaked. Mall. And... Coconut yeah. Mall. Um, they also tweaked, uh, you can like item boxes will spawn respawn faster like balance stuff oh it's, yeah yeah item boxes respawn kind of as fast as they do in not uh, quite as fast as tour because in tour it's very much instantaneous yeah but, but it's it's, it's a bit almost yeah um and i know they like randomly like completely like added a complete like new stat for like everything in the game for this last update that everyone was freaking out about wait what's the new stat it's like depending i forget Someone's gonna kill me watching this, but um, who? It's like if you like certain cart combinations aren't necessarily as good as they were before due to some hmm. tweaks. I did um, not know that. I forgot. Really? I forgot what it was. Um, I but, cannot believe they're still rebalancing Mario Kart Eight. <laughs> yeah, they like it. ten years later. Yeah, they they actually did um, change some stuff. Um, they even fixed, they even changed it so that like when you're flying as a glider and you get hit by lightning, you no longer just fall to your death. Oh, that's a great change. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's that, that's man. That's a mechanical Think, change. Things that I've just always wanted. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, and like they've even, they've been still like doing like weird bug fixes and, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and we mentioned it, but that, um, that item mode is fun. We did like. Like you can do like the everyone's gonna do the like, blue shells only, and we did like other just silly things. Yeah, because before you but, could pick like item modes, right? It was like frenzy or like yeah, or but you could never actually... like individually pick and choose things like you can in, like smash items. Yeah, like you couldn't actually um, yeah, you couldn't actually like select on and off. Um, that's what it was. I, I've just this... always wanted to turn off blue shells. Yeah, always. The um now you the can. stat I was hmm. just looking it up the stat that they added is basically it determines how long you're invincible after spinning or crashing. Hmm. Um, it depends on your driver and your machine parts. That's a oh, interesting, wholly new little the hidden thing. stat. It's it's yeah it's not like uh I don't think it's a visible stat but it does That's impact stuff which is kind of neat. Um, so where where we rank the the DLC? Um, honestly, for me, probably number three. <laughs> it's gotten me a lot of joy this year. Um, I know it's just like... Would, would you say it's better or worse than Switch Sports? Better. Okay. Better. Would you say I, I, could, I could compromise it for... Yeah. I, I, I think mean, Arceus is really good and definitely better than Mario Kart DLC. See, I, I personally <laughs> like the DLC more than Arceus, but like that's not gonna be most people because I also am not a big Pokemon person. So but I think but, I think number four is a great spot for Mario Kart 8 DLC that came out in 2022. Arceus is just cooler than a yeah. yeah. bunch of like it's very Mario, new Mario yeah. Kart courses, yeah. 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 Hmm. Alright, I'm good with that. Right, cool. I'm not. I, I did this way better than I expected the DLC to be. So, yeah, it's. I I definitely had a lot more. I had more fun with the Mario Kart DLC than I did with Switch Sports, even though I like Switch Sports too. Yeah, yeah. Um, who played this next one, James? No, I stalled out on it like a couple hours in because of Final Fantasy fourteen. Okay, but... the next game is Xenoblade Chronicles three. I didn't play it. Play didn't play it. Uh, I bet it's. I bet it's better than. Uh, Switch Sports. Mm. It's definitely better than Battle League. And it's definitely probably better than Dream of Fate. <laughs> I it's probably better than Pokemon Scarlet Violet at least. I, I don't. I know I don't, the music's good. No, the music is good. It looked really good. Um, uh, we're I judging love, this game loved, based on a couple hours. I loved what I played of it. It was just you know MMOs do bad things to your brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, I don't really know where to put this one. I would be if okay with that. Go ahead, go. If you're not willing to put it above Switch Sports, I, I'm willing to put it above Pokemon. I feel like if I if I played it, I'd probably be like, yeah, it's above Switch Sports, but I'm not an RPG person, so... And hence, this is... I mean, I will say it's, it's definitely a lot more full-featured than Switch Sports. Switch Sports is a little bit bare-bones, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 looks like a very full game, and people like the full thing. Yeah, but this is I would list. be I would be fine with it being over Switch Sports, even though I've never played it in my life and probably never will. But I, I don't really care that much. Yeah, I don't really have an opinion on this one. Just put it wherever. I mean, the real problem is I feel like the next, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight <laughs> games <laughs> are going to be, like, us kind of twiddling our thumbs. Like, Yeah, we're going to have to like, just shove them in there real quick. Yeah. And get to the stuff we we care about more. Yeah. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. It's a video game that came out uh, in 2022. We want it at above above or below Switch Sports. I would say Take below your for my personal taste, but that's probably better. I would say above. Yeah, definitely the definitive list here. I'm okay with above. Yeah, it's fine. Let's let's make it. I let's let's appease the. RPG audience. Mm. Um, After we let them down last year. Yeah, we're gonna. I mean, we're gonna continue to let them down. Oh later. yeah, 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 definitely. Band I have not. I will. I want to play this game. That's a game that same. I will play eventually. Oh good. <laughs> same. I think this game is um, probably one of the best games of the year. Uh, <laughs> you know, we could I think just, we could just leave it, it off if we really want. <laughs> You don't want to just arbitrarily rank it better than uh, Mario Kart 8 DLC? We can arbitrarily rank it better than Mario Strikers Battle League. That can be our, our bully game this year. I, I I'm sure that that on. game is amazing because it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, it looks super fun. It looks very creative. And uh... Here, I guess I'll, I'll ask this right now. Did anyone play Fire Emblem Three Hopes? No. Why would no. I play Fire Emblem Three Hopes? Can Fire Emblem Three Hopes be the bottom game? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes. Um... I feel like people are going to get mad about that, but yeah, sure. I feel, I feel like Battle League deserves to be the bottom game, though. That's the thing. I think Bayonetta 3 is probably better than Pokemon Scarlet Violet. Probably. Than this very Like, almost game. positively, right? Yeah, it's got to be right. Assuredly. Put it below the sports to piss people off. Assuredly. Boom. I feel really bad that I haven't played this next one, too. Oh, like, you can't change this one, then. And rank it. Uh, oh god! <laughs> I, uh, know, I haven't played this game. Okay, rank it. I mean, I would. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm the almost positive Live Alive is better than Nintendo Switch Sports Plus Golf DLC. Yeah, but I feel like I've yeah. already used up my goodwill on putting RPGs above <laughs> that game. So, uh, no, I'm okay with this one. I'm okay with this wow. one. Um, okay. This was Little like one live. of the high. I was really hyped for this game and just had not found the it's, time it's beautiful it is a beautiful game and it is definitively better than switch sports plus golf dlc and there's so many hd 2d games now that like there's about about to be a third one on the plate and it's just like oh my god there's another one coming up in this list i, I know that's yeah. what i'm saying there's two yeah. on this list and then octopath comes out in like three weeks and it's like oh my god yeah. oh god i forgot about that too um, our next game is Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope, and I bet this is one of the worst Nintendo games of the year. Uh, right? I feel like it probably isn't, but I played. I, I played. You did? The first, I played the first one when it was on trial this year, and actually really liked it. Which is weird for me because I don't like these kinds. It's of games. fun, but very long. I got kind of bored before I finished it. The first one. Yeah. I got two worlds into the first one and just kind of fell off of it. I didn't really care for it very much. I thought it was okay. And I, I was, was actually people... kind of surprised at how like people loved it. I know there were some people who were very, very hyped for this sequel this year. And I noticed that some of those it people were not particularly crazy about the final result. Honestly, it looked more interesting to me than Fire Emblem Three Hopes did. I mean that's that's an easy that's an easy. Oh, I yeah. I I think I'd be fine with it like near the bottom, but above three hopes. I feel like I'd I'd be fine with it above Battle League, 
and I'd probably be fine with it over Dream Buffet too, honestly. Okay. Uh, James, do you have any any no say in this game you've never played? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the only thing I will Dream say. What? The only yeah. I will say is that, to my understanding, Three Hopes is like the best, uh, Warriors crossover thingy. Oh, that's that people says to, so little to me. People seem to think it's like the like better than um. The Age of Calamity better than Hyrule Warriors better, maybe not better I, than Persona Five Strikers. But that I didn't think Age of different. Calamity was better than Zelda uh, Warriors, the first one. I thought Zelda Warriors oh, the first one. I like. So I disagree. I, like, I liked. Calamity yeah, better than the first I like. One. I'll, I like I'll have it to try more Calamity for several reasons. I dislike it for so like th those games. Those two games coexist for me in a way that I like both of them for different reasons. Fire Emblem. It's honestly for me. I'm the sh I'm gonna be the shallow guy and be like I I immediately just tune out because it's Fire Emblem and I don't care like I just don't find that world interesting yeah. at all. It's um, I mean I like Fire Emblem but the world is automatically less interesting than Zelda. To well, me. it's just like this this the elements and stuff that you bring together. It's just like I don't care about like actual different soldiers or whatever. Like I don't play mainline Dynasty Wars because I don't care for the like you know the the exaggerated japanese quote unquote history element or isn't it, it's just not I thought it was three kingdoms this whatever, chinese history whatever yeah. i don't know it, whatever it is <laughs> uh it's i i it's very for me for me for a warriors game to be enjoyable for me a big part of it is like what the the series crossover they're doing with it is yeah for and me the only interesting content. ones are one piece and zelda yeah for me, it's been Zelda so far, and I was like, oh, cool, I want another crossover Warriors, and then they gave me Fire Emblem, and I'm like, it makes <laughs> they sense. they gave you two Fire Emblems. Yeah, it makes sense, but, like, I'm not into it, so. so it's I'll the play, worst this game. is another one that I'll play one day, for sure. Oh, this game's awesome. Oh, yeah, same. Uh, we're kind of, like, out, out, of the, um, out of the Nintendo sphere now, so that was all the Nintendo well, releases. But... We have a lot more Switch releases, was and we're really, still going to rank them. Was that really all the Nintendo? I feel like we're forgetting something. We might have missed something. That's there funny. has to be something we're forgetting. Uh, Neon White is pretty awesome. I played the first two worlds of this. Um, Neon White was taking SGQ by storm last year. Um, it was... A, so many people were into it. It was very fun watching it. I definitely want to play it. I just haven't it, gotten to it yet. It's probably better than Arceus. I, yeah, yeah, it's... A... I'm fine with that. The music is so cool. Uh, the writing is cringy, but I, I, it's not the I mean, biggest point of the game. But it's I'd just say, so yeah. much fun isn't to replay it, the levels. Isn't it kind of like cringy in a charming, like cheeky way, though? <sighs> like, like they're kind of going for like they're going for it. They're, it's trying to be cheesy. It just doesn't super work for me. Yeah, some games okay. it works for me, and some games it doesn't. I've heard it described as like late 90s early 2000s english dub of an anime that's great and like that's that the is, kind of vibe it's going yeah. for and like yeah that is like by default cringy mm -hmm. but i feel like if they know what they're doing yeah also it goes without saying the music's good that shit's machine girl dude yeah the, the music yeah. is so good the game is just fun to play um but you've even ignoring all the story stuff like uh, there's I didn't like hate it. I'll, I'll I'll play more of it. Like to decide like the story things, but yeah, super fun game. Uh, I think it's better than Pokemon Arceus. Um, I mean, I'm honestly fine with that. I uh, could put it there. From what I, everything like I've it. seen of it, looks pretty amazing. I just need we, we've to all like time to play it. it. Yeah. Pacross. I've never played Picross S8, but I've played I mean, other Picross games, and they're all exactly the same, and they're pretty damn good. Number one, baby. Number one. Oh my God. <laughs> Picross S8. Um, I feel like Picross is better than Sparks of Hope. I'm just kind of is thinking this... of Picross in general. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was this, was this the one they finally added fucking touchscreen controls No, that for? was seven. Okay. Uh, I've so it's played... not an innovator. Sadly. I haven't. <laughs> completely finished all of uh all of them i played Pacross s1 through three and i finished all the main puzzles in each mm. of those but not the like super puzzles or whatever right uh yeah Pacross rules that's good 
I still want to get the the Sega Pacross. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. Um, should I, we rank Pacross? I still say, I say above Sparks of Hope. Sure. At least. Sure, I, that's fine. I feel like you put Pacross in its own like. But it's own special. <laughs> it's own it's, special uh... slot. It's in the Pacross slot. Like it's a perfect yeah. concept. Nothing. It's like. Even a mediocre Pacross game is still Pacross. It's just very satisfying. I feel Has like anybody here played Triangle Strategy. Well, before we get to Triangle Strategy, I just want to say I feel like the, so right now that puts Pacross eight at eleven, and I feel like an alternate name for that is just the game of Pacross in general. And that and that's <laughs> eleven large. out of fifteen. So yeah, it's at like large. yeah, a Triangle Strategy. No, I have not played. I don't care. Has that's anyone the... played? The... The demo for Triangle Strategy. No, that's no, that's the other <laughs> HD two D game that's like now backing up in my backlog. That's like, oh god, what are you? When are you ever gonna play these? Wasn't there Dio Field? Okay, I'm, I'm at I'm adding um some qualifiers qualifiers to our <laughs> list so people can kind of just like hey I played, see what I we played. actually thought about things. I played Mario Strikers. What do you want? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Dio Field's not HD 2D. Oh, it's not? I couldn't even remember, honestly. <laughs> I love how high some of the ones are on the list. <laughs> no, it's the other uh, the other HD 2D game that will eventually come out was announced like two years ago now at this point was Dragon Quest Three Remake. Oh, yeah. that one looks so good. I'm surprised that's taking let's, so let's long. Let's put that as number one, honestly. So, But Triangle Strategy? Yeah, I mean, I don't care. That's kind of just what it comes down to for me. I'm not an RPG person. I want to yeah, play, I will too... put it above Battle League. Okay. Too big brain for Clay. He yeah, can't think. Correct. It's it's better than Mario Strikers Battle League. I feel like it looked all right. Is it better than Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope? That's no. I don't know. It's mm. hard to say. I, I bet it is. Probably. That's the it, thing. It might be. Let's say it. Yeah. All right. I'll put it this way. I'm going to play Triangle Strategy. I probably yeah. won't play Sparks. I would play Sparks of Hope if I'm, it was like 10 bucks. I feel like Dream Buffet is, well, it's not better than Sparks of Hope. But... Dream Buffet is not a very good game. <laughs> I know, but I, like everything in me is like rooting for it, you know? Yeah, but it's bad. It's, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. It's just like mediocre. All right, baby. Here's the main event. I'm ready All right, for this, this next game, one. All right, this game, some of us have played. I'm ready for this next one. Sonic for Frontiers. It. All right, baby. Um, I've been this one I've been playing mostly this year actually, but and I'm not done with it yet. I'm only on Island Three. It is such a clusterfuck of a game. Like it is, it is honestly one of the most like head scratching games that I've ever played, and I don't really, know, and I don't know wow. why I like it as much as I do. Hmm. What do that, you mean head scratching? Can you can it, you elaborate? Head scratching in the sense of like. For every like idea that's there, there's like another idea or point of execution that's fucking bizarre or just why, like. So I guess I could get it. I could so give that, I the think. the core the core gameplay of running around the area, doing the little platforming challenges and collecting the MacGuffins is fun. That's the part that's fun for me is just kind of exploring around and and kind of slowly clearing out the overworlds. Yep, that's every, the good part. Everything <laughs> else about it is so bizarre. The cyberspace stages feel like ass and just yep. are weird. Um, the little weird quest things that happen occasionally when you talk to characters, they're like mini game quests where it's like guide the Coco or, you know, whatever, are strange and mostly bad. Yep. Um, there's those enemies that are like take 10 minutes to fight because they're all like QTEs or chasing after them for five minutes mm -hmm. until they randomly let you homing attack them and fight them. Yep. There's, a, there's a skill tree which you get very quickly and very quickly becomes clear that like there's only a couple of moves on it that are actually efficient and useful um and also on um, i only played through like the second island mm -hmm. but unless you like get more stuff on it you could probably fill that skill tree out on the first island without too much work it's i would say i don't know about first island but you definitely can fill it by second island like easy like i i filled it out like at the very beginning of the third island was when i got my last thing um their supersonic fights those are an idea um do you mean the boss fights yeah like the boss but man i will die on the hill that first boss fight is dope as hell it, they're very 
they're very shallow they, because all they amount to is like wait until you can hold the parry button. Yes. And then go ham. The first true. boss is literally just a parrying tutorial. Like Yeah, that is true. But the it's the best parrying tutorial in like it maybe it's not the best parrying tutorial because <laughs> like there are games like Sekiro and Revengeance yeah. in the world. <laughs> yeah. But it's still pretty good and Maybe it was just my low expectations. Yeah. Uh, but that shit put a smile on my face in a way that I did not expect. The the, en- the big enemy bosses feel like they're like out of Evangelion and like and nothing else in the game feels like. <laughs> it's true. Uh, visually, oh, the game looks like such a mash of things. The story in the game is hilarious because it's all of it is so inconsequential. It's just a matter of like these things. The first, like, whole, like, little mini story thing of, like, the first island is, like, Amy wants to reunite the two Coco lovers. And, like, you, I guess, do that, even though it doesn't seem like you do anything. And then you see a flashback of what happened to them. Spoilers, it wasn't good. Um, and then, like, the next island, it's like, oh, Knuckles is here. And these, uh... Coco are trying to defend themselves in battle, and Knuckles is apparently the war guy now. So, help them do that, even though they didn't, or something. There's, like, random flashbacks, random references to other Sonic games that are completely pointless. The It's everywhere. It's like, you might as well not have even bothered. Um, and then, yeah, like, everything in this game just feels like... just Like, it's, like, firing in so many different directions, and, like, none of it adds up at all like the MacGuffin but... you have to talk to people to actually use the MacGuffin like if you get the seeds or whatever you don't actually get them as level ups until you talk to the stupid character then there's like fishing segments which are very simple <laughs> and fun and they're good for getting resources and then there's resources that look like they should be finite but they're not <laughs> it's very fucking confusing I don't know how this game calculates like percentage completed but Still, somehow, probably the most fun I've ever had playing a three Sonic game. It's definitely a the the core running around the areas to find MacGuffins is fun. Um, it controls bizarrely. Some of the areas are like really annoying to navigate. Island two with all the really tall cliffs comes to mind here, where it's like you should be able to get to a place, but you can't because half the island is, like, raised up, like, 10 million meters above everything else. Mm. See, I thought on the open... I thought the open world traversal actually felt pretty good, control-wise. It's the... the, the Cyberspace levels feel like trash. Yeah, the the cyberspace (laughs) stuff Which is so weird, because, like, we've... Like, they felt good in generations. Like, how did they ruin that? Well, the, the game is so indecisive that it will basically let you edit anything about how sonic moves which i find hilarious which is very funny you can set his like default speed you can spe- set like his speed cap or whatever like it's so weird yeah um, i maxed all that out i also think and I, I i point this out all the time because i find it amusing you know sonic on sega is a simple one button game and sonic frontiers in current year literally uses every single button on the controller which i think is ridiculous <laughs> um I'm talking click sticks. Uh, ev- literally every single button has a function in this game, and it really should not. <laughs> it really does not need to. <laughs> the com the combat like button combos are like like I don't understand them half the time. Like it the train like the training loading screen stuff is literally a combo trials, but for Sonic. Like, it's like, boost in this direction, then jump, then boost into the wall, then run up it, then jump off, then stomp. And, like, that's the, yeah, it's, the loading it's like the game. old Yeah, it's like the old Bayonetta loading screens. Yeah, and <laughs> there's, like, you know, the little puzzles are fun. They repeat themselves a lot, but they're, like, some, some of them are, are more fun than others. It's just... Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of the puzzles. It's, it's like, it... One, one, the comparison that I made, and then I actually, once the game came out and everybody started playing it, I started seeing this comparison everywhere, too, is that, like, it, it's like they made, it, it, it's, comparing things to Breath of the Wild, you know, is kind of <laughs> trite or whatever mm, at this right. point, but it it is really like they made it so one of the core 
um, parts of the experience is the Korok seeds. Yeah. It's like you literally have to do the you have to do a bunch of Korok seed quests just to progress. Like you have to do those to unlock the the what would I guess be this game's shrine equivalent, which are the the cyberspace levels, which right. again all suck. Uh, yeah. Aside from the music, the music in the cyberspace levels is hot. Yeah, there's like the progression systems in the game are strange because you get portal gears. I think that's what they're called uh, to unlock cyberspace stages. And a lot of the time it'll be from like a big enemy or like from doing a specific thing. But sometimes it'll just come out of a random mook enemy. And it's one of those things. It's like, shouldn't this thing yep. like not be random? Um, same with the keys. There's like the vault keys that you use to get the chaos yep. emeralds. And it's like, sometimes you get a chaos emerald just from doing one of those silly quest mini games for some reason. Other times you need to get the vault keys to unlock them. And it's like some of the vault keys you'll get from like actual significant stuff. And other times you'll beat like a random group of mooks and they'll give you a vault key for some reason. <laughs> and the one the one thing I really hated was having to collect the like. The little goodness, I, I think they were like, no, it was like there, there were items you had to collect to be able to like summon Amy Rose at oh, a the certain memory story tokens. point. Memory, yeah, the memory tokens, tokens, yeah. Yeah, I felt like those being a like a, a random collectible item was really weird. Just a just a decision that they made that makes no. Yeah. It's so strange because you can get them all over the world and like there's plenty of places to get them, so you think they're finite. But then you go fishing and it's like for for three tokens you can get fifteen of these bad boys, and I'm like, what? Like, yeah, I, I... or or you you can get them from doing that little thing where you like draw a circle on the ground too. Well, there's, like, certain treasure points, yeah, where, like, you'll draw the circle on the ground and, like, 15 of them will pop out of the ground. And you feel like, oh, maybe these are finite, but no, they're they're not. Also, they're called memory tokens, but none of the characters have lost their memory, so I'm very confused <laughs> on that point as well. <laughs> maybe they're Sonic's memories. I, I, I don't know what they are, but... So, yeah, this game... Um, so where would you rank this video game? I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now and upset literally everyone. <laughs> I will put it above Bayonetta three on our list. That's <laughs> because I have not... not played Bayonetta three. I like it less than Switch Sports, but actually I kind of like it a little more than Switch Sports at the moment. I don't know. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> the unfortunate thing is that I've played double digits of hours of it, so. <laughs> I liked what I played of it a lot more than I expected. Yeah. Which is like from a zero to a five. Yeah. Yeah. Out of 20. You, can, you no, think it's better or worse than Pokemon Scarlet Violet? I was going to say that I'd be willing to slot it between Mario Rabbids and Triangle Strat. Well, maybe above Triangle Strategy. It's not better than Pacross. Let's be real. <laughs> I mean, that's, what is? that's fair. I can put it above Triangle Strategy just because I did find time to play it. I can but I can that... compromise and put it over Triangle Strategy. Okay. I, as much I as no... I want to put it over Bayo 3 just to make people mad. That sounds fine for, for that. Harvestella. None of us play this game. None of us play this game. I've Look heard cute. it's re I've heard it's really good. Yeah, I want to play this game. Uh, it's a weird situation where it came out and they didn't send out review copies, yeah. which that's usually kind of a like bad sign. But everyone I know who's played it thinks it's very good. Yeah, I will say I want to play this game and I don't want to play Triangle Strategy. Yeah. So I would put I, it above it's Triangle. Probably Strategy. better than Sonic. That's Frontiers. fine. You would I put it better than Frontiers. I it probably is better. Than okay. James, <laughs> I think I might end up playing that on PC when I do play it. But yeah, That's fine. you don't you don't have to tell people that here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm the joking. Filthy secrets. <laughs> uh, so better or worse than Sonic Frontiers? It can definitely be better than Sonic Frontiers. It's definitely not as good as Pacross. No, what is? I think that's. All right, now I, we're I think now we're on. facing our all of our most played game of hold, the year. Hold on though. I think I think we should save this one for last. I think okay. we should move okay. on to the next That's one. Fine. We'll come back to this okay. one. I agree. That's fine. Uh, this is Clay's game. So, so I, I play this for another platform. So yeah. Paper. So Fall Guys on Switch, I actually really like how it runs. Obviously, it's not the you know, smoothest, but like it's very consistent and it doesn't feel bad to play. 
Mm -hmm. um, I like the game itself. I've wanted to play it for a while. It finally came to Switch, so I started playing it. Um, I think they do too much with like events and like seasons and stuff. It's a lot to keep up with for what is very much a very simple game. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and I've I've played a good amount of it this year. Um, so like, for me, it's not as good as Switch Sports, but it's probably like right below it for me for this year so far. Excuse me. I just think it's a um, genuinely fun and and cheery game. It's simple. It's silly. It knows exactly what it's doing. Um, yeah, you know, it's just fun to to mess around with. Do you say better than Switch Sports or worse than Switch Sports? Not as good as Switch Sports because it doesn't have the the intrigue, but still very fun game. The intrigue. It's, well, you know what I mean. Like it's not like. No, no, I know. It's, I just it's not as nuanced. You, it's not as yeah, satisfying. Gonna, it's just, I'm gonna share an unpopular opinion. Mm -hmm. I Maybe. I hate I hate how that game looks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just I and I usually don't feel this way about like cute things. Like, mm -hmm. but when I every time I look at Fall Guys, I'm just like, eh, fuck this. Well, I don't like the characters. <laughs> I'll say that much. I don't like how the characters look. I like the. Environments. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, the environments look fine. Also, yeah, I just it feels like a Mario Party mini game, but it's it's somewhat fun. I I actually I played a few rounds this year, but not on Switch. Everyone keeps comparing kirby's dream buffet to fall guys and like i'm sorry outside of like racing they're nothing alike yeah there's just not they're not they like have pastel visuals that's that's it <laughs> <laughs> driving driving me insane um so are, are are we okay with this below switch sports yeah i'm fine with it sure switch sports. Okay. i'll let clay have his weird yeah. video game uh, none of us have played Monster Hunter Rise I Sunbreak. I don't care about Monster Hunter at all. I don't care I, about Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. I liked Rise a lot, but okay. again, just okay. another another uh, thing that's just like, you know, in the backlog. Came out like two months after I started playing FF14. So, what about what about Better Than Sparks of Hope? Well, I, I almost game. certainly... I, I think R Monster Hunter Rise, the base game, is better than like most things on this list. I was gonna so I'm ask going you, to be willing you, to put it. Yeah, I was gonna say like, where would you rank Monster Hunter Rise on this list, and then put, <laughs> and then put, and then like lower it a tiny bit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's definitely above Switch Sports for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, uh, since it's just DLC, I would have it probably below Li Live, uh, Live Alive and. Um, uh, Xenoblade Three and like I think Pokemon White Scarlet Violets. I I don't think I would put it above Pokemon Scarlet Violet. You yeah okay so you can slot it between the cross. And are you actually Scarabia. saying? I was gonna say. I like Scarlet Violet. I was gonna say you were gonna put that above Pacross. How dare you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure. It's Monster Hunter. Um, it's the it's the first Monster Hunter that worked for me, so that's it's special. That's so funny. I think this I think this one's very unfair. Yeah, uh, I don't think anyone's mean... played this on Switch, but it's near Automata End of Yorha Edition. This is one of my favorite video games. Yeah, this is number one, baby. Like, this is number uh, one. Uh, this this, is, game this is... is the number one video game, but it's a port, it a... so I would. It is half. I would be willing to put it as number two. It is half mm. a decade old at this point. Yeah, I would not put it above Kirby, but I also. What, have what if we put it above? Mario Kart 8 it, DLC Wave 1 to 3. That I'm fine I, with. Yeah, that's fine. That game's insane. It's uh, so amazing. If you haven't played Nier, you should play Nier. Yeah, I want to get yeah. to it eventually. Yeah, if you haven't played either of those games. I think they're both on Switch now, right? No. Uh, no. no. Just, oh, the other one's still on. Rep, Replicants. <sighs> Replicant is not. No. What did they put that on? PC, PS4, oh. and Xbone. Yeah. Okay. I still haven't played that version. I have i need to get i need to get to that but i have played gestalt the original yeah so. i played the 361 uh i i really <laughs> feel like there's nothing to say about near automata that's not no, yeah said. we don't we don't need to relitigate like it's amazing old. yeah uh 2017 was a wild video year? game year though holy shit right yeah. like god damn 
Play near. Uh, yeah, Planoa. play near if you haven't played. For the glory of Planoa Phantom Mankind. Reverie series. I have something it's... to say about oh. Planoa. Uh -oh. I haven't played it yet. I, I played I've played the games before, no, just yeah. not this version. Um I've wanted to buy it forever, but um yeah, they decided to not give us a retail copy and they decided to make every individual SKU incompatible with each other, even though they're identical content wise. So like what? if I buy the European Klonoa game, I can't buy the US DLC with it. It's very weird. Wait, but the DLC there, there's no DLC for Klonoa though. Yes, there is. There is. Unfortunately. There is what, a what is it? there's a deluxe pack that includes a gallery, a soundtrack, and a bunch of costumes. Um, Couldn't granted, you just buy those off of buy the... the European store one? You could yeah. buy it on your European store. I just wouldn't be able to like most Switch games. If you have like say you bought the European version of the game, mm -hmm. you could buy the US DLC and it'll work with it. In terms but of that's like what I'm saying. Stuff. Couldn't you just buy the European game and then buy the DLC off the European eShop? You can. Yes, that is yeah. that is correct. I'm just saying so there's, it is a so there's no issue at all. I'm just saying it's a an inconvenience to me as someone who does not <laughs> want to spend money on on a not a main account. I guess is what I'm uh, saying. Gotcha. Um, well, but that, that's the thing, though. You could you can launch the DLC. You can from well, your actually, American account, even uh, if you buy it on the Euro account. Correct. So. You can. You can. So there's um, just I'm just saying like even if it's quote spending money on a non main account you'd still yeah, be fine. Yeah. I just don't like I just don't like splintering where I'm making purchases on pretty mm -hmm. much like it's just it drives me insane. Yeah, I don't I get that. want anything of value on an account that I'm not actually using. Um, that being said, I'm glad they put this out. I know it has a, some issues. From what it's I a hear. very good dual pack at least on other consoles. I haven't yeah, played the Switch version. I, I would have loved it if they put it at retail in the united states it would have been a day one for me um as it is i'm gonna get it eventually um i've been like waffling on importing it for a while yeah um, you should have it. the original uh, two games are very good if you haven't played them you should play them yeah um, like they're they're slow paced 2d platformers yeah but they're they're very nice like the environments are very pretty it's yeah it's enjoyable to walk around those worlds. It's definitely not like a fast place Donkey Kong or something. Yeah, they're very. Uh, um, no, I like these games. They're yeah, and this is also a very affordable way to play yeah. them because the they're very expensive. Are expensive. Yeah. Um. As for ranking, <laughs> that's very difficult. It's difficult when. Um. It's better than Sonic Frontiers. I mean, yeah, and that's that's no shit. Um, I think I'd be fine with just putting it right above Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, sure, why not? Even though it probably is a better game than some of the other stuff, the fact that it's an older game and they have been like, I don't know. Eh. Well, it's no, a good uh, game. We should play Klonoa. Cool, is cooler yeah. than Sonic did as anyone, a character. Did anyone here actually play a Reverie series? Yeah, uh, I, I did. I played uh, it on Xbox. Oh, okay. I bought, I, I bought Planoa Reverie and Pac-Man Replacked on day one on Xbox um, with some I had rewards points, but I got them. Do you like it more than Pokemon Scarlet Violet? No. Okay, I was just curious. Pokemon Scarlet Violet is a cool game, and I want to play more of that. Yeah. Uh, though I, I do like Klonoa uh, quite a bit. I mean, I honestly think it's better than Fall Guys, but I'm not going to raise it that much. Cause yeah. It's, an old game yeah yeah um, I, mean, I mean fall guys is kind of old at this point too yeah so. and the next man pac-man Pac repacked does not hold up as well as Klonoa does i haven't gotten um, around to this one yet i have it i just haven't gotten to it's an okay 3d platformer yeah i actually i like it better on the playstation i think the new version removes a lot of the charm oh you think so i think so I've um, I've seen a little bit of like the comparison footage and it's very funny to me how like all the lead up to the game they didn't really talk about much other than that. Hey guys, look, this is Pac-Man World, and now it's prettier, which is a weird thing to focus on for Pac-Man to me. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it feels great, and I I remember it feeling better, but that might just be because I was younger. Yeah, well, uh, I would I mean, need to. If if this were Pac-Man World Two on the list, that is the most mid fucking game ever, and I don't give a shit what anyone says. I'm so tired of hearing about Pac-Man. I would World need II to play it again. Good. It's very whatever. 
it was um, like an average platform for the very, time but like it's very average but there's i think the problem was there's so many don't get bad it. platformers back then the, like yeah. average platformers got like elevated it's like when i hear people who were like who absolutely loved like tech and the power of juju and stuff it's like it's stuff that uh, people grew up with or whatever which is fine <laughs> it's just yeah. the most like mid game ever yeah um, Pac-Man people one. always talk about people always talk about that like SpongeBob game like that, and I'm, I'm yeah, like, yeah, I haven't played it, but I'm like, this yep. game doesn't look very good. Yeah, the, sorry, sorry, Bikini Bottom fans. The Pac-Man World One, um, I haven't played as much as World Two. I played a bit of one on PlayStation through the PS Classics, <laughs> um, or the the downloadable ones, not the not the stupid uh, mini system. Um, and it, immediately, I found it more charming than two um and i like the structure of it a bit more than two um it's kind of so open far. you can kind of like choose between levels which is yeah fine. it's it's fun and like the the-, the level theming and like stuff just felt it feels more like pac-man to me than pac-man world 2 does uh, maybe but, but anyways i i think it's case, okay uh, it's it's yeah. a lot worse than klonoa is it better than um, sonic frontiers i feel like probably no is. Oh, okay. No, I don't think it is. Okay. I Even know. though I didn't play it, I I mean I'd probably put it. I definitely think it, it's definitely less confused than Sonic. <laughs> I I mean I I might even put it like. It's either below or above Dream Buffet. I don't know. Oh, okay. Because it's also it's like similar, like pretty thin in content. I don't know. I don't. I don't it's not. It doesn't sound as thin as Dream Buffet. No, maybe not. But, I mean, I have no issue where, where you want to place it on, on the list. You're the one who played it, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on Pac-Man Repack, so let's just put it. Put it doesn't sound like you spent much time on it to begin with. I mean, that's more than most of the games on this list, though. I mean, I played, like, five or six levels. Oh, I thought you finished it. <laughs> There's only, like, seven levels. Yeah, I... you got so close. There's, I didn't really there's, care. There's definitely more than seven levels. There's like twelve levels. <laughs> I, was gonna say, like, I definitely beat at least a world and a half. Yeah, I was gonna say there's like there's like five worlds in that game. What are you on about? No, there's not five worlds, are so, there? There's five worlds in that game. Hang right. on. I'm gonna double so check. We, are you saying that you'd rather play the original than Yes. Okay. I'm gonna just double check because I'm pretty sure there's five worlds in this game. Um and I'm gonna try and find it in a timely manner. We can move on while I while I. I think the original was more charming. Yeah, that's. I don't. I, I don't like how the new visuals look, and I do like how the new visuals look in Quinoa. So it's not like old. Yeah. Like it's not like I just like old games better. Yeah, 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 yeah. This I, says I just, that there are 23 levels. Yeah, there are. Okay, so oh, so you so you can't choose between all the worlds. You can choose between three worlds when you start the game. I see. I didn't realize there was more after yeah, that. So there, okay. so there I got are, I got a lot more to do. There are one, two, three, four, five, six worlds. What are the themes? Four levels each: uh, pirate area, ruins area, space area, funhouse area, factory area, and mansion area. Okay, so so those last three you can't you don't you can't access from the beginning. So and then, then there's like, like a second set of worlds. And then there's like the maze mode thing too. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So, uh, I I'll probably get back to it at some point. Yeah. I'll get I've never it. played them, so yeah. Yeah. But anyways, I I didn't I, I didn't I didn't love what I played. I think it's. I'm just gonna edit the name here. Pac-Man World Repack. It's just Pac-Man World Repack. I will say I'm I'm very happy that it's out. Yeah. So I mean we we could raise it because of that, but but yeah, I feel like it deserves so, better than Dream Before. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. If I if I Let's... were to try Pac-Man World, you would say just play the PS1 game. I would have to play it again. Yeah, I would. Le- they like. Added, I'll, I'll what, try like, it soon. They added an easy mode to it, and like, I it think it's already easy pretty mode. easy. Or yeah. Whatever. Um. How about how about below Sonic Frontiers? That's fine by me. Because it is, it, it's not a bad game. Yeah. yeah, I need to try the original again to see because I, I owned the original on PS One, but my disc was scrapped, so I couldn't. Like uh, yeah. play past like the first world. Yeah, I want to say it's like six bucks on PSN right now. If you want to get it for PS3, Vita, PSP, that's how I have it. You can still buy things for those. Uh, yes. They, they the reversed. Now. They reversed that oh, okay. decision. Yeah. So you okay. can. 
Um, All right. This next game. This one's a big one for me. I beat this game. Okay, cool. Did you play this, James? No. Okay. Uh, TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Probably one of my favorites this year. Um, definitely a love letter to Turtles. Um, there's so much love and care in this game. Yeah. It's pretty lengthy as well in terms of Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty long for a beat em up game. Um it has some stuff that I'm not crazy about. The when you're playing through story mode, which is basically just letting you pick like stage by stage, there's this whole thing where your score like levels up your character over time and each level they get something. So like they get hmm. access to some moves or they get access to another like super meter or they get an extra life for like when you're playing like the stage to like not die or whatever. I'm not crazy about that stuff. I don't think that needs to be there at all. Um but they made the characters feel different and feel useful in different ways. Um I think it's a very smart evolution of the Turtles in Time uh combat system. Um which it's no Streets of Rage four, but it's still very fun um and has some some depth to it. Um, that the dodge but the dodge button was a very nice inclusion. I think hmm. that that makes the game feel very fluid. It feels um, less uh like quarter quarter munching than like the arcade games. It, it feels less. I mean, beat 'em ups are mashy to a point, but it feels like there are definitely different moves that are useful for different situations. <laughs> um. You have this like jump, like a rising move that's useful for like airborne enemies. You have, you know, the the dodge button for certain types of enemies who like to like poke in on you. There's um, the throws you can individually control, like what type of throw it is. So you can throw towards the the screen or, you know, do the the the, the smash throw. Um, there's a jump attack, but then there's a double jump attack, and and those differ. Um, you know, you have super meter. There's a taunt and the game is just very pleasant. Uh, the music's fantastic, number one. Two, visuals are fantastic. Um, it's very much uh, a, a Turtles game. It's very much just like they've stuffed every character you could possibly think of, either as like a cameo or as a boss. Um, it's a little thin in terms of like... So like, there's the main story mode, which just lets you pick individual level by level, and then there's the arcade mode. And those are both online. I just feel like it would have been nice if they included like the silly like versus mode that was in uh, Turtles in Time, or they had the silly like time trial things from from those games. It feels like a little bit thin in the modes department. Mm -hmm. um, but they did do an update that was pretty significant recently um, that added basically a bunch of dip switch settings for arcade mode, um, so you can do stuff like turn off the ability to taunt or turn off the ability to have more than one super meter or um you know uh i think there's one that like makes enemies more aggressive or it's like a bunch of like different settings that you can mix and match um and that's available both locally and online um which i think is great um you know you can have it so that like there's some stuff with like score and stuff too the game scoring system is weird because it's so based around that level up factor but um basically you can customize it to be more or less like the older games if you want to um and yeah like i don't know it, it was just a joy uh to play from beginning to end e each stage has a couple of challenges and a couple of hidden objects in it nothing is particularly hard to find um there's achievements they're very whatever um you you gotta mention the coolest thing about the soundtrack though the vocal tracks they got fucking Ghostface and Raekwon oh, from yeah, Wu Tang. That's, right. <laughs> that's yeah, incredible, yeah. That's dude. That's amazing. Very funny. Yeah. They uh they went all out for it. It plays very well. Um, definitely uh the best, um, the best Turtles game that's been released in a while. Um, I feel like this year was a great year for Turtles games because you had that and you had the Cowabunga collection. Um, yeah, those I get those I, two like mixed up in my mind actually. Yeah, this, this is the new one. Yes, yeah, so this is the new one. Uh, yeah. Calabunga. I really like this cool game. Too, but... I thought it was um, quite a good beat 'em up game. I I don't usually beat like finished beat 'em up games. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an annoying exploit where you can just 
taunt over and over again to like <laughs> use the specials yeah like infinitely yeah and that's way too easy to to exploit but um yeah the yeah. game feels really nice there's certain enemies towards the later half of the game that are a little bit annoying but the triceratons are annoying yeah but i annoying. i did i did quite like it i played some about the arcade stick and i felt like i was yeah um, the other, the other thing youth. I will mention um, is, I believe, if I remember correctly, one of those new dip switch settings they added, uh, Muffin, is the ability to make it so that um, taunt doesn't increase super meter. Mm. Um, so if you want to play it that way, uh, that's now possible to do so without oh, that's that nice. exploit on, online. Yeah, without being tempted. Yeah, exactly. It's um, too tempting. I just yeah, pressed. Yeah. I just kept pressing it. The bosses are very fun. Um, there's a couple yeah. that are sort of reused, but like most of them are very unique. Um, yeah, it's a fun game. All the voice uh, where... acting is from the original cast as well, where possible. Ooh. So it's, it's just cool. it's, it's a good game. I'd put it, I'd probably put it at number three for me, um, at least on this list, I would say. Um, but I haven't, I haven't played Neon White yet. It's definitely better than Arceus for me personally. I don't know if it's better than Forgotten Land or Splatoon 3, but it's up there. It's one of the best, my favorite games this year. Um, I mean, I liked Arceus more, but if you like the other one more... We can put uh, it, like, below Arceus. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, that's fine by me. Sure. It's it's just I would recommend if if you even have a tenuous relationship with turtles yeah or with the arcade games the or the games, um play it. Uh, someone added the next one as a joke. I think it's uh, kind of I, rude. I think we're not going to include that. I think, I think it's That's kind of my uh, personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the spoilers. It was Advance War. <laughs> it was Advance Wars, and then it was me that added not, it. Not ranking, not ranking the war. No. I can't. I can't rank. I can't rank that poor game that has been so delayed. And the next game didn't come out in 2022, but, but a big part of 2022. It was a big part of 2022, and it's all of our most played games of the year. <laughs> Pretty mm -hmm. much, uh, basically every single day. Yeah. <laughs> We every have, day. I play this game every single day, whether I want to or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't have a choice. <laughs> it's always counting. It is Pikmin Bloom. And this Bloom. game is um, Pikmin Bloom. You've heard us talk about it before. Is a um, is the best Niantic game ever made. I love this game easily. It's my favorite Niantic. Uh, game as well. yeah, I think I would get I, at best. I don't know. I think. Pokemon Go is probably better, but I like Pikmin Bloom more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pokemon Go is more involved, but I, the thing is, from a walking game, I don't want more involved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it Pokemon Go is not yeah. really a walking game. Pokemon Go is a game that you have to walk to play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pikmin. I want Bloom a game that makes me walking... walk. More. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It has like the right amount of interactivity to it. Yes. Um, and you don't necessarily need your phone out when you're walking. Yeah, that's what it. I like with Pokemon. You have to like, constantly like stop and catch stuff and like. Yeah. With this, you, just, like, yeah, you can start you... the flowers and you can just walk and be like, you yeah. feel like you're being productive. Like the most that you really have to do that you can that you really can do with Pikmin while walking is three things. One, if the flower is bloomed, you can stroke the flower and it gives you petals. Shut up. Two, um. <laughs> you can uh, use the item spawner thing to make like expedition items show up that are in the, that are based on the area that you're in three Which you can only do once per day without correct. paying yeah and three you can take AR photos which doesn't count so yeah besides those oh well, I was specific I was things, gonna say four you can like if you're growing Pikmin you probably will want to pluck one on the walk yeah yeah yeah. and then yeah. plant a new one right yeah you can but like, yeah, it's, check and see if something hatched and then you know plant another but one. on top of that it, it like it's just cute like the stuff you do when you're not walking like when you're just sitting at home or like before you're out on a walk and you send your yep. pikmin out on the expeditions to pick up mm -hmm. new seeds or new yep. fruit to get more nectar or you or you're you know you're collecting your petals for the day by feeding the nectar to the pikmin yeah or like, it, and even then, like you, the the like, daily look backs. Yep. 
And like if you take pictures or anything, like mm-hmm. the, the Apple like automatically know that you saved a picture from your camera and give you the option to like associate that picture with the day. It ends up being a neat little like a almost like a little thing. journal or scrapbook. Yeah. That's it's what so I like cute. about it is that it's very much like a it's like a walking diary sort of. Um, yeah, of, of like places you go and yeah. like and it has the it, weekly look backs too now. Where it shows yeah, like steps for each that. day of the week and the places you went that week. You can save them and share them. Like I have so many Pikmin Bloom images saved that are just like, <laughs> this is how the walking challenge went this week. James, James, James did all the work. thousand flowers and <laughs> I did nothing. Yeah, basically. And reminds me I, I need to walk more. I also uh, enjoy like that the the little events they have in terms of like the special Pikmin that you can get with the golden seeds. Um, well, not just those, but just all the the cool little costumes and yeah, silly little things they wear in general, like the 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 rock Pikmin wearing like just wearing a hamburger. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very funny. It's very cute. It's it, it it's a better motivational tool for walking mm-hmm. than any I've ever seen published as like an app. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and it uh, does so without being intrusive, which is really yeah. important to me. And it also or does so with like, him. it also does so with like out really being a money sink. Yeah. At all, yeah, I think I that I've put maybe five or six dollars total into it, and that's all from like the Google Reward Survey thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's the only um, money I would put into it too. Yeah. I, I have this like existential fear that it's not going to last much longer. Yeah, I honestly uh, because I it's know. not making money. But I also like have this like they're still putting so much effort into it that I feel like it's still it doesn't feel like well, a game that's on the end of its life. You know what I mean? I feel like it's a game that will last for as long as Miyamoto can like <laughs> pay for it out of his uh yeah out of, out of his, his paycheck. Yeah, as long as he's got the influence to be like, <laughs> no, they're gonna still keep working on Pikmin. I feel, I feel like it, it's um, definitely one of those games that's more of like an IP booster than anything else. It's just like get people to fuck around with Pikmin, which I'm fine with. Yeah, I don't like the main Pikmin games, but I like Pikmin. It's, it's like when you look at the 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 stuff that Niantic has shut down, like the Harry Potter thing they did. Mm-hmm. I, I have to look at that and think that it's just like WB didn't give a shit about that. Yeah. Also, they saw po- they saw Pokemon Go and they were like, "Oh, we can retrofit like Harry Potter onto this somehow and right. make it uh, work." Do you, you know what's even worse? They just released an NBA. I one. was about to say that I got an email about it. <laughs> There's an NBA one now where you can pick up athletes by walking around and then you play like games of like horse with them, basically. <laughs> Oh, that's weird. It's very that's funny, so and you can get clothes for them. The clothes are like stat boosts. I think the thing that's cool about Pikmin is it doesn't actually try to ape Pokemon Go at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, there's really no actual comparison other yeah. than it uses the same, like, map as Ingress and Pokemon Go do. Yeah. Like, there's not the flowers like, and whatnot. Yeah. It's like there's not, like, 10 billion Pikmin stops all over the place or, like, Pikmin gyms or, like, you know, like it's no, yeah, yeah. it's like Pokestops and gems, those are all just the flowers, yeah, the big flowers that you can bloom by planting little flowers next to them, yeah. And the events that they've done are cool. I like that they try to, they, they've, they've tried several different ways, yeah, of doing events, yeah. Um, and even the most recent one is one they're repeating from last year, but also having new colors, yeah. Um, even this time, it's like they're they're trying something a little different. They have two separate events, like two separate like uh, mission chains. Missions, yeah. One that's like kind of easier that gives you ones from last year, and ones that are a little bit harder that give you ones from this year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting going forward seeing how they continue to handle that stuff. It's always um, exciting when you come back from an expedition and you see there's a huge seedling like in the the list of things that you can get. Yeah, unless it's a roadside huge. Yeah, and, then and you're just like I live near roadside, so it's always roadside. Well, yeah, the funny thing is, like, I live near roadside, and there's, like, a lake in my backyard. Um, yeah. So I also have water, but I have so many water winds, too, yeah. now. 
I will to, to give anyone an idea. The reason why we hate roadside is because when they get their special decoration, all it is is a sticker with a letter on it. <laughs> yeah, so I actually only found out recently that the sticker with the le- the letter on the sticker is hmm. um the letter of the town that you found it in. Yeah. So yeah. there's so there's like a sticker for every letter of the alphabet. Yeah. So you yeah. could and then not only that, but there there are two of each letter. Oh, there's two um, of each letter? Yeah, there's like a an orange version and a blue version. And they're stuck on different parts of the Pikmin. What are how do you get the is it just random? It's just, what version? It's just random. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I never noticed. I just noticed there's a sticker so, and it has a B on it and I'm now if, if you're a myself. real mm, a real nightmare completionist, yeah. there are theoretically fifty two uh oh. roadsides for <laughs> oh my each God. for each color. That's uh, no. No thank you. Um <laughs> but the game will count like when you get a decor Pikmin, which are the, the special Pikmin in this game, if you basically whenever you get one of that of that type for a color, it will kinda like count it. So to mm-hmm. technically get like a full set you just need one of each one, yeah, type. yeah. Yeah, yeah that it yeah, has. Not all types are for each, you know, thing. But yeah, great game. Number one. It's yeah, the number one game of the year. One. Yeah. I have, yeah, goatee. Yep. It's easily. I'm, I, I have to be honest, I'm extremely excited to see if they do anything cool with it for Pikmin 4. Uh, like, yes. legitimately. They already did the cool thing where if you played the Pikmin 3 game or demo, you got an, an item in-game for it. Yeah, a special backpack. They had, like, a crossover anniversary event. They've started doing that with some of the mobile stuff recently. Like, Fire Emblem Engage has that whole thing where... If you play Fire Emblem Heroes at all, you can redeem a DLC code for characters from that game. Yeah, um, I I, I like reinstalled that. Fire Emblem Heroes the other day, and I have an actual, like, the the only time... Uh, I played it when it first came out for, like, a couple days, so I played a couple of the chapters of the story mode in that, mm-hmm. and then every other time I would reinstall it for, like, an event, I would, like, install it, uh, use the free orbs they gave me for the event to roll the event's um, focus or whatever. Right. And then, like, kind of just forget that I had it or uninstall it. But sure. this is the first time that I've reinstalled it and actually played it. And all of the stuff and, like, quality of life stuff they've done to that game and how much better it runs now. Maybe that's just me having a better phone. Mm-hmm. It's actually really fun. And it's pissing me off that it's fun <laughs> that game that's, is too complicated that, for me i just can't oh i that's the game that got me interested in fire emblem like it's a it's a simplified version of the core fire emblem gameplay it's in so the way that made me think like that, you know what that it made me think like me. oh i should try fire emblem that game for me is a platinum coins grind machine i just put the <laughs> auto battle on and go through story chapters every time i'm low <laughs> that's a good point you i hadn't get thought about doing that points for every story chapter completed and there's like a oh. billion of them oh my god yeah it's stupid that's a that's a that wait a minute that's that's actually well, rad that's a like yeah. like no no chapter. wonder you get all the goddamn main club chapter. nintendo like, shit well, i if i if i if i if it's like dangerously low i'll just auto battle it for like maybe like half an hour and i'll have like fucking like 600 platinum <laughs> nothing it's like they're on the book eight i'm on like book three <laughs> wow that's incredible um but yeah so anyway uh so what is your favorite video game of the year hmm. doesn't have to be not nintendo just you know flat yeah, out because yeah. obviously we we went through all our nintendo we yeah. have our list here yeah. that we will post yeah. my, fa- my favorite video game of the year is oh sorry clay oh so you can go jared okay uh, my favorite video game of 2022 that I finished in 2022, um, but I started in 2018, uh, was Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, we talked about it on, on a previous episode, so I won't I won't really go into it much. But it was um, it ended wonderfully, and um, I it was uh, it was better than Splatoon or Arceus. Uh, and I played some of Elden Ring, but I didn't finish it. But I I liked Red Dead more. Uh, wonderful Yeehaw. game a plus i'm a cowboy now yeehaw um yeehaw for me we've kind of talked about most of the stuff that i really enjoyed 
this year. You know, Kirby, Splatoon 3, TMNT, Switch Sports. Those were games that I played a lot of this year. There's also <laughs> stuff that I played that continuing from last year for a while, like mm. the um, WarioWare, Wario Cups, while those were still oh, yeah, yeah. new, um, and golf and stuff. Um, I got golf with your friends this year, and I haven't played a huge, huge, huge amount of it, but I really like that game. It's um, a very cute game. There's a lot of there's a lot of stages, especially if you have it on computer. I think there's like yeah, like custom stages as well. Yeah, there's tons of custom maps, which mm. are very funny. Um, yeah. But my favorite gaming thing that released this year is a cheat answer, and that's the Mega Drive Mini Two. It's mm. it's so good. I understand that that's like a bajillion games and not one game, but because it's like a single thing, it's 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 great. It's still the best thing about twenty twenty two. 2022 for me so i would That's say cool. that yeah, yeah i remember awesome. remember we talked about that thing and yeah, i was it's, actually it's not, like, i, I was impressed. sad that i couldn't buy it yeah if you do find a way to get it still um for a reasonable price mm. um i would still, still say go for it just i've gone on a rant about that before i'm not going to again <laughs> but um tldr is 60 games really cool choices some unreleased stuff some new stuff um attention to detail Runs great, beautiful little box, best mini that they that's ever been released. So that's my twenty twenty two. I think my favorite game of twenty twenty two is probably Elden Ring. At the end of the day, not Final Fantasy uh, fourteen. Well, wow. that I'm saying of twenty twenty two, probably okay. my favorite thing that I played in twenty two twenty two. Uh, two old games that I want to mention: mm-hmm. uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Uh, actually, I haven't finished either of these yet. Final Fantasy fourteen, I haven't finished Endwalker. I'm like five levels from finishing Endwalker, hmm. and I, I need to get back to it. But when I, I saw, like, I kind of was feeling myself kind of teetering on the edge of needing a break from MMOs after playing one for so long. Yeah. Um, FF14 is a really special game in a lot of ways. And... Uh, the other one I want to throw out a mention to is Haunting Ground for the PlayStation mm, 2. Yes. Of course. Uh, a game that was received very, I won't want to say poorly, but it was received a little bit less than mediocre at the time of its release. And I understand why. It is a clunky, um, sometimes frustrating game. Uh, janky game but when it hits it hits real good yeah um the second boss of that game has one of the single most unhinged monologues that i have heard in any piece of horror fiction that i have ever consumed video game movie book whatever uh, if you like horror stuff, you owe it to yourself to check out Haunting Ground. It yeah. emulates pretty well on PC. I think that actual legitimate copies of it are like exceedingly expensive. So, yeah, uh, I don't think uh, I would recommend going that route. I think another uh, re- reason why it was reviewed low, which I think is interesting, because it came out like a few months after Resident Evil Four. Um, oh true oh and yeah. that's actually an interesting thing it's kind of built from the um the uh the remains of resident evil 4 the original like i thought resident it was the, i thought 4. it was like clock is it's also like related to like clock tower 4 or something i think yeah i think it yeah. is hold on like, now that I, feel, might be, now I think that might be what you're thinking about it was like the remains yeah. of clock tower 4 i'm questioning myself oh no oh it's been rumored that Haunting Ground was originally developed as Clock Tower 4 and contains scrapped Resident Evil 4 assets. Oh, we're both right. So Yay. both. Fantastic. Uh, and yeah, just throwing this out there, looking at a used copy on eBay, $400. <laughs> <laughs> don't pay that much for it. Don't, don't pay that much money. There, had there it are ways this... to play old video games. We had it in the oh. store at one point for like maybe 60 <laughs> Oh my god. So my top... My that's my top three of 2022, baby. Yeah. Elden, Elden Ring, Ring is, I want to play Fantasy more Elden Ring. 14 and Haunting Ground. I actually forgot something really important for mine. Oh, go for it. Yeah. Um, this was the year that I played Among Us for the first time. 
<laughs> and I, well, you're a little a little late, but okay. I actually really enjoy yeah. that game. I think it just works on a lot of levels. Yeah, we played it in the server a lot for a while. I'm surprised you never played with us. Well, I was like not because I usually don't like hidden role games mm. that much. But yeah. yeah, playing this one with 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 some people and it's fun, and I like how much that you can just like kind of unlock can kind of unlock cosmetic wise just by playing the game. I think it's cute. Um, the other thing I want to briefly mention is this year for me, a huge theme for games that I've been playing are like fan hacks and projects. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would encourage people, uh, to check out more, um, ROM hacks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, yeah, whether it's there. Mario 64, or, you know, whatever you prefer The the big ones for me have been smash remix and, uh, ultimate MK3 oh, plus. I, I really need to try smash remix. I, yeah. it looks, I've seen like a bunch of videos from it it's and it seems awesome. Very good. If you like, m maybe I'll talk with you one day and you can help me set I it up. I can help you set that up very easy. Yeah. yeah. If you, um get the chance uh, i would definitely try it out even if you run it it's made to run an mu or on hardware um just download it and run it in pj64 or whatever yeah. you use um, i don't have anything to run it on the for real yeah um but yeah uh great stuff there from a lot of different i can't even there i'm sure there's plenty more that i'm not even thinking of but those are the two highlights for me in that space yeah we had i want to add here earlier this year so you can hear about that yeah there. I want to add one last thing. I, I I didn't play as many MMOs as um as as James did, but I, I also played like a fair amount of like WoW Classic and Final Fantasy fourteen. Had a lot of fun with both of them, and I want to get back to um Final Fantasy fourteen this year when I can. Yeah. Oh yeah, Wrath of the That's... Lich King Classic. I almost forgot. That was fun. Yeah. It was it was a fun couple months. Yeah. <laughs> fun couple. <laughs> um. But yeah, that was uh that was 2022 in the year of Nintendo oh, and in well, the year of wait we have to mm. read the list. Oh my god, do we? Yeah, we have to read the list. We ranked okay. them. No one knows where they're ranked. <laughs> I was gonna upload the list. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's read it. We can do both. Read it. Start from well, the bottom. Oh, start from the bottom. Okay. So let's just go in order. It'll be me, Clay James, me, Clay James. Okay. Okay. Number 25, the worst, the single absolute <laughs> worst switch game of 2022 is fire emblem three hopes which none of us play yeah number 24 is mario strikers battle league 23 is kirby's dream buffet coming in at 22 is mario plus rabbits sparks of hope none of us played number 21 triangle strategy which none of us play <laughs> number 20 uh, Pac-Man World Repack. Uh, number 19, Sonic Frontiers. Number 18, Klonoa Fantasy Reverie Series. Number 17, Harvestella, which none of us played. <laughs> number 16, Picross S8, which none of us played. Number 15, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which none of us played. Number 14, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And coming at number 13 is Bayonetta 3, which none of us have played. Number 12, Fall Guys, the Switch release. Number 11, the Nintendo Switch Sports Plus Golf DLC. Number 10, Live Alive, none of us have played. Number 9, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which... One of us barely play. <laughs> Number eight, Mario Kart 8 D DLC Waves 1 through 3. Uh, number seven, Near Automata, the end of Yorha edition. Number six, TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Number five, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Number four, Neon White. Number three, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Number two, Splatoon 3. And this worked out perfectly because number one is Pikmin Bloom. <laughs> Game of the Year 2022. Game of the Year 2022. Game of the Year. Go for a walk. <laughs> Go for a walk and Go touch for a some walk. grass. Go outside. <laughs> the Game of the Year for 2022 is taking a walk. Yeah, as it should be. Uh, I, I like that I made a frustrated sound at Clay. 
like, well, yeah, I was like, what did. else? What I was like, what else is there? The list. What else is there? The list, dude. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we'll post the list too. But yeah, we will. We will post this after the episode's out. Um, I'm sure it'll make everybody very happy. <laughs> it'll be very happy. <laughs> it'll be great, and they'll agree with every choice. Yeah. Yeah. And, there's, I mean, there's nothing to disagree with. This is the most scientific. Important. The most important part is that Fire Elm is on the bottom. Yeah. Is that a Muso cannot be at the top yeah. of this list. Well, I mean, it, a so Muso not, can, can but Let's not be much. real here, dude. Fire Emblem fans are used to being the bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> Can't so wait to rate, was, uh... rate Fire Emblem engage next year. <laughs> After having not played it at all. I'm sure I'll have played it by then, but yeah. yeah maybe. Toothpaste, uh, John. So that's been the 2022 uh, of Nintendo and Switch and of the Nintendo Pipeline podcast. This is the uh, this is our first episode of the year. Yep. Uh, it's been a slow start, but we're gonna we're gonna we're getting back into it soon. Yep. Um, obviously, 2023 has been a banger year so far for stuff, though. So. Oh yeah. Yep. We've got the best TV show with Milf Manor. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait the to best... rank Milf Manor on the list next year. <laughs> The best psychedelic rock album by a, a rapper in Little Yachty's new album. <laughs> People Everything. are actually excited about an Xbox game. Yeah, uh, there's a random, amazingly. Yeah, gotta play that Xbox game yep. made by the the Evil Within people, but yeah, it's like it, a rhythm character action, so cool, cell shaded game with like so much four, different than nine, every one of their other games. And it has a with four by nine inch nails. <laughs> And like the flaming lips, like who? Nine Inch Nails. So some like thirty-five-year-old dude like found his iPod in the closet <laughs> and was like, "Oh shit, oh, we got this. <laughs> we got to make a game." Hell yeah, baby! <laughs> uh, Nintendo released a game uh, this year too. Uh, Fire Emblem. It was called Fire Emblem and Rage, and people like it. I think we got more Kirby supremacy next month. Yeah, return to return to Dreamland. Zelda uh, this year, maybe. Uh, maybe every time you say Zelda, it gets delayed like three <laughs> months. So uh, there's other big stuff this year. What's mm-hmm. the other big stuff from Nintendo? Uh, Pikmin Four. Oh yeah, that game that Pikmin I won't like 4. as much as Pikmin Bloom. <laughs> uh, probably a new yeah, Pokemon. It should be. It should be a cool year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably be Pokemon DLC. I doubt. I still can't Pokemon believe Arceus didn't get DLC. That's such a so unfortunate. That's a bummer. Well, why would it? There's a that game came out. No, I know. Like eight months before Scarlet. Yeah. Violet. I'm still surprised Scarlet Violet came out that soon after. Oh, also Goldeneye just came out. Oh, that's true. Goldeneye just came out. And oh, which is the f- yay. You can it's the do... first NSO game with widescreen, I think. We should play that. Yeah, it does have widescreen. And with some weird convoluted stuff, you can make a control the way that you want it to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would just play it like I have the 64 controllers. Yeah, I need to get one still. Oh, they're great. They they still risk soccer once in a while. I'll just keep an eye out. Yeah, I, I never catch them, unfortunately. But yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. A rumored a rumor direct soon. We'll see if that comes to yeah, fruition. If it does, you'll see it here. You'll I'm hear. Sure. Yeah. That is it really a rumor direct I mean, or is it just really. like a spec is it like it's, a speculative it's just a, be- it's gonna happen because it's that time of the year and yeah the stuff there or... there were also some things of like uh advance wars like went up for pre-order at some places yeah i know there's some stuff going on with advance um, wars uh, so... and i i saw a rumor floating around twitter about a new mario baseball which is probably going to be like another mario sports game that comes out with nothing in it in <laughs> june <laughs> Two months later, maybe it has something in it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah the love like Bowser Jr. Yeah, I don't know. I'm lo- I'm looking forward to see what Nintendo's cooking. Yeah, what I mean, I'm I'm, I'm excited. What especially is, is he like cooking? As we get further and further into the Switch, and we kind of uh, we haven't we haven't seen a Mario in a while. Uh, Odyssey yeah. came out in 2017, and we have not gotten a 2D or 3D Mario this since is the then. year of Isn't 3D this... Mario. Isn't this like the longest gap between 3D Mario's like ever now? Probably. I don't know. I see. I don't. I don't even think of it as a gap because like we had Bowser's Fury in 2020. Oh, you're right. Yes. And like there's oh, been sure. Races, that was a new game. It's yeah. Like, I've had enough. I want my 2D. There Mario was a, yeah. There was that yeah. new Mario commercial today. Where <laughs> yeah, Seth we Rogen heard. Um, we heard Seth Rogen talk. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, he, certainly he sounded did. like Seth Rogen. He certainly yeah, did. I mean, it's fine. I, I do think, I don't want to talk about this forever because I'm tired and don't yeah. feel great, but mm. I think it's very interesting how much 3D world is has ended up in this movie. Yeah. and in Like, the including part. the cat suit. Yeah. Um, I, I really think it's cool because I love that game. You know, you know when we all get to go to Super Nintendo World that that will be a game on the Game of the Year ranking list? Just want Absolutely. everyone to be aware of that, that we will, Which, will rank the theme park. The theme park is a game, yeah. The theme park will be counted as a game. <laughs> I mean, we're probably going to have to rank the movie, too. Yeah, right? that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we game. have to do a um, the 80s movie, too. We do. We are going to watch the original yeah. Super Mario Bros. movie. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's fun. We should yeah. just do that as a watch party in the Discord. That'd be That'd hilarious. Be yeah. yeah. That Maybe movie's can... not bad. We might be able to put it out as like a commentary track for, you know, like you can listen to it while watching mm-hmm. the movie if you want or something. Yeah, that'd be fun. But, yep. All right. That's been the Nintendo Pipeline podcast. Thank you to Clay and James. As always, uh, thank you to everybody who listens. Uh, thank you to NES underscore Limgo. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been a guest on the podcast last year and looking forward to both new and returning guests in uh, 2023. Yeah. This is episode 60. Wow. Congrats. We barely, we're we're on our way to a (laughs) hundred. Wow. Only nine more. (laughs) Only nine more. (laughs) Nice. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.